Okay, hi. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's time to talk about the 2021 failures. What didn't go well in the garden? In gardening and in hobbies in general, whether it's plants, pets, crafting, we tend to focus so much just on the successes and how things have worked, but I think it's helpful to go over what didn't work. What did we do wrong? or what just didn't work out right. So yeah, here we are, let's, let's do this. The first thing on my list, <laughs> the first three things on my list, I don't have any visual representation of because they didn't work out. Yeah, that would be seeds. I planted this entire area up here up with thousands of seeds, different types of zinnias, cosmos, different ground covers. Just wanted a gorgeous show of flowers up here. Didn't work out. Also had some purple bell vines and lots of other fun things planted up and nope, nope, none of those, none of those worked out. Because of squirrels, ground squirrels, they look like chipmunks, but they're not. They like burrow down into the ground. They ate most of the seeds as well as rabbits and birds. Well, they ate the sprouts. The seeds stayed and most of them got up to like, you know, just a couple of leaves and then they got eaten very, very, very quickly. On that note, the dahlias, planted tons of dahlias. None of those worked out. That was because of the ground squirrels. I was watching them. They would dive down. It's really entertaining to watch, actually. They can burrow into the ground in a split second. And they were getting under there and chewing up all those dahlias that I planted down there. I did have some that I planted in a whiskey barrel that did okay, but still they got munched on, so they had a setback. Dahlias didn't work out. And then number three, remember the artichokes? Planted those up early spring. No, late winter in the house. Was so excited about growing the artichokes. But again, they got eaten. I do have a remedy to that for next year. I picked up all of these wire bells to put on top of things. I'll probably get some more and for others, I'll just makeshift them with, uh, what is it, chicken wire, hardware cloth. Make my own because these, these stupid things are expensive. You can only buy so many of them. That will help a lot when it comes to <laughs> the birds and the rabbits chewing on the plants. The ground squirrels, I don't know if that's going to be a solution because well, they'll just dig right underneath those. There are contraptions that you can plant your tubers in, like little baskets that's supposed to help keep the vermin out, to help keep them from munching on the roots, but I don't know. It seems like an extra step that I don't know if I really feel like taking. Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll figure that in the springtime. That's the first three. Seeds, dahlias, artichokes. Just, it didn't happen. I tried, but nope. Didn't work out. Man, he's having fun. Okay, next up, the bamboo planters. I love the bamboo and I'm excited about the bamboo. I know a lot of the other people who watch the channel, not so much. I think that it's an interesting, nice texture that will be semi evergreen, if not fully evergreen here, so it'll look nice all year. But the annuals underneath them, the begonias and then the elephant ears, they just didn't do much. I thought that the spot got a lot more sun than it actually did. The trees have grown. The light's different every year. What I did over here this year is nothing compared to what I used to do. I used to have palm trees and mandevilla vines, all sorts of beautiful plants that love sun, but that's just not the way it is anymore. So I just didn't really get the color that I wanted out of the containers next year. I'll go with impatience. Or the akubas. If you remember in the springtime, I was heavily debating putting the, or I already had akubas in the front of them from the winter time. And I said that I felt like I should pull them out because I thought they would fry in the afternoon sun. But the afternoon sun really wasn't a problem here. And also the queen palm that goes in the middle, which isn't here right now, it's off in storage. Right now is irrelevant because this video is probably not coming out until like late November, or December. It's October right now as I'm filming this. But the queen palm that goes up here grew a lot. So that also shaded things more than I expected. Probably next year going to go with impatience or something that will really put on more of a show without necessarily having to have as much light. The dragon wing begonias don't have to have a ton of light, but they needed more than they got. Oh, and right now everything looks like junk because I'm in the process of pulling things and ripping things up and getting ready to go in the house. So here's a random one that's not on my list, but <laughs> the limelight, Dracaena, Daramensis. This was underneath the Robolini palm, which was all the way over here, right there in that corner. 
Then when they came and picked it up and took it off to storage, I forgot to move the Dracaena, which was being shaded by the Robolini and the Bird of Paradise that were there. So that's a failure. That was a big oopsie. Now the plant's scorched, but it'll grow. It's not the end of the world, but had I just moved it, it would look a lot better right now. Okay, number five. So I'm ignoring that random one that I just threw in there. The Stuttgart cannas, those variegated cannas in the bulb hall back in the springtime, I talked about how I keep ordering them. And then what grows is never the variegated Stuttgart cannas. Same thing happened this year. I pulled them up. They flowered. They were definitely not shoot carts. Those have a peachy flower on them. And what was growing was like a yellow flower with orange specks. It was just a green canna. And they were from three different sources. So I tried three different places to make sure I would get those variegated cannas. And it didn't happen. Not a single one of them actually sent me what I ordered. So I don't really know how to go about actually getting them at this point. Because this is the third year in a row where that's happened. I haven't ordered from three different places every year. I did that this year out of desperation. It didn't work out. There's no beautiful variegated cannas back here. I haven't been able to find them in years. Every year I try and find them and I can normally pick them up from like a big box store, but they're not carrying them lately anymore in the springtime, at, at least as the rhizomes. I don't ever see them, at, or I never see them as plants either. When I've been ordering them online, that's not working out either. But they're one of my favorite cannas. This is a great spot for it because the light's filtered. That's a type of canna that does tend to scorch when there's too much light, so this would be a good spot for it. It's back there where it's a little bit more dark, so not only does that help protect the foliage, but it would just look beautiful through that window. I've grown the Stuttgarts before, and I absolutely loved them. We had a really bad winter, and they didn't come back one year. I haven't been able to replace them ever since, so that was a total failure. They just, everybody's just sending me green cannas. I do know that sometimes according to what people have told me in the comments, that they can take a year or two to develop their variegation, but that, that was never the case like five or six years ago when I used to get them as rhizomes. They would pretty much always have their variegation the first year. Maybe not as strong, but that's just because the plants themselves aren't as big. So I don't know. Wasn't thrilled about that. That was a definite failure. Oh, and then the honeysuckle transplants that you can't see because I accidentally killed them. Over down there I have a trellis, an arbor that has the Major Wheeler Honeysuckle on it, which is one of my favorite vines. Gorgeous flowers, smells nice, flowers fairly prolifically. I took offshoots from that in the spring, put one on the side of the fence and one on the other. And when I planted the cannas, I chopped through them. And then I felt pretty horrible about that. Went through, added some more soil, really Gave him some TLC, but it just, it wasn't enough. So that was, that was a definite oopsie. Not the end of the world though. I do not have a shortage of honeysuckles that I can divide up and try again with that one next year. Uh, number seven, pool planters. Not a hard fail, cause I did like them, but it just wasn't my favorite thing I've ever done out here. And of course they'll horrible right now cause they're dying back for the winter time. I, I think with the Colocasias, they just came out a little bit too far. So it hid the petunias, which I really like having the show of the petunias around the pots and uh, I don't know. And I overcrowded them. I said it when I planted them that I was probably going too far and I was probably pushing it, which I tend to do with a lot of arrangements, but it always works out. This time, eh, I think I could have gotten a lot more growth out of some of the plants that are in here had there not been so many of them. So that's something to remember for next year. Actually, next year I have something entirely different planned for these, but you know, have to wait and see what's available. Yeah, like I said, I did still like them. It just it wasn't my favorite because the petunias really just didn't get to stand out the way I would have wanted them to. And you know, with the shape of these pots, I think something that's taller and more slender in the middle would make more sense. But this looks nice too. Number eight, <laughs> the hanging basket. This was a spring arrangement and it looked beautiful for a few months, had pansies in there, different lobularias. There was a dianthus in the middle, this creeping jenny that's coming all the way down here. The whole thing looks terrible right now because I have the drip disconnected because it, it's just, it's time for this to grow. And around, I'd say mid July, I was like, I can't believe this thing's still growing. I'll just keep it all year. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Some of you said it in the comments too. I really just didn't feel like getting up there and taking it down and going and getting more annuals and planting up something different when the plants seemed like they were still growing, but I should have. Now that things have cooled off, I am enjoying the fragrance from the lobularia, especially when I have the window cracked in the morning. The whole kitchen just smells fantastic from it, but it just, isn't pretty. So I'm gonna remember that next year. I mean, I know lobularia doesn't do well in the summer, but it just kept doing its thing. And it just, yeah, I don't know. I shouldn't say lobularia doesn't do well during the summer. It can, in a better potty mix, it holds on to a little bit more moisture. This spot gets really hot. 
So, but better here in the spring and in the fall, but summertime, yeah, it, it just wasn't it. Number nine, the lace vines. I think that's what those are. It's a weedy vine. I shouldn't say weedy because I think that whatever this is is actually a native, but I have been battling these for years and, um, excuse you, Turbo, get out of there. Go on, get out, you know better. I really had these under control in the spring and in the early summer, but at some point they got away from me and they got so tangled into these hedichiums in here that I was nervous about pulling them. So I didn't want to pull up the hedichiums, so I just went through and made sure to never let them flower. That's better than nothing, I suppose. At least that's going to help lessen the spread for next year, then maybe next year I can fully eradicate these from this spot. They're pretty, and they have gorgeous flowers on them, but man, they take over. They really spread out of control. Number 10. You can't see it because it's not here. Musa sicamensis. Planted up the, what were they, the red tigers? I got those back in the springtime. When they were shipped to me, they weren't really packaged all that well, and they had clearly been bent and been shaking around the box. They just melted, like, within two weeks, which is unfortunate. All they had to do is, like, tape the pots into the box or maybe throw a stick in there so it couldn't have wiggled around. Would have been a totally different outcome, but, you know, did what I could. I got them so early in the season that really couldn't do much to try and reinvigorate them because the heat just wasn't there. I do have, you can barely see it. It's just a puny little thing. So there was one tiny growth that did end up coming back but there's no variegation on it because well it just it couldn't keep up with the bajus so timing was wrong there should have spaced it out differently and probably just put it someplace different altogether i wanted to clump it together i've done that in the past had the variegated sycamensis and with the bajus and it looked really cool but i think that the it, the difference was i had planted them all up at the same time maybe it was a year apart but these are yeah there's no way that those little plants could have competed with these oops and then lastly was just coconut core. I've talked about it for a couple years now. I'm trying to move away from peat as much as possible because it really, it's not super renewable. It takes a long time for peat to develop. The way it's harvested isn't great for the environment. Best to get away from it if we can. So I did as much as I could this year with coconut. But what I found was just the, the blend I was using specifically. I'm not saying coconut doesn't work. The way I was using it wasn't right. The blend I was using just did not work for drip irrigation. It, the moisture was just going right through the pots. It wasn't wicking its way through so everything can get watered really well. Probably could have gotten a lot more growth out of the plants had I tried a different mixture. I just used like the standard coconut homemade blend that everybody uses where it's like 50% core and then some charcoal and then some compost next year i think what i will do is probably go like almost 50 50 with the coconut and the compost otherwise i noticed that i just had to constantly constantly amend and feed with more compost the moisture retention just wasn't there when they were on drip watering by hand it was fine but the things that were on drip which is most of what's out here it just wasn't cutting it. So I'm gonna try a different blood next year and make it work better. Not giving up on it, just need to refine my technique. And that's it, that's everything. Not so bad, really, considering. What are some of your failures for the year? We all have them. Nothing to be ashamed of, it's how we all grow and learn. It's important to be able to recognize those things. Ooh, my battery's almost dead. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and it's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.